back to the art and the bridge between the arts and Lacan. I'm under the impression that Lacan did not really believe that there is a I. So the sense of I, like me, is an illusion of the mind, right? It's almost like, um, uh, yeah, I can't explain it better because I never understood it better. But I'm under the impression that Lacan avoids the concept of uh, self. So, for example, in humanistic psychology like Carl Rogers, the whole point is to liberate the self. There is a self, and uh, Lacan is more fluid about that. He thinks that the self is an illusion of the mind, which, on that respect, it reminds me a bit of Buddhism, because Buddhism also believes that everything is mutable, everything is always changing, there isn't really a self, because the self that exists today is not very similar to the self that existed 40 years ago. Uh, it's almost like that Greek story of you have a boat and the boat gets old. So every year you change a piece of the boat. The boat rots, the wood is not good. You take out the wood and you put a new bit. Then the paint peels off, so you repaint it again with new paint. And then the mast falls, you put a new mast. So after 300 years, you have a boat that looks like the first boat, but is it really the same boat? Arguably not, because everything in that boat has been changed already and replaced by something new. It looks the same, but is it the same? Perhaps not. It's a copy of what it used to be. So Buddhists believe in that. They believe that the self does not really exist because it's an illusion of the mind. I don't know why I'm talking about this. This was free association of ideas, okay? My question is, because Lacan does not believe in Descartes, when Descartes says, I think, therefore I exist, because there is no I in Lacan, it's almost like ghosts. There isn't a real I. And he also believed, apparently, from what I read, he believed in paranoic knowledge. And he was doing researches with Salvador Dali and with the Surrealists, which I find fascinating, because maybe in parallel, they were all working on their own theories about the concept of self and on their own theories about the concept of paranoid identity. Dali loved that topic, and so did Lacan, and so did some of the Surrealists. So when we talk about the arts, if you ask me which kind of art was more touched by psychoanalysis, I would say straight away, surrealism. Straight away. Because they're interested in dreams, they are interested in free association of ideas, they are interested in the logical, in the irrational. So, for example, for your audience that has not seen this, Surrealists used to do something that is called cadavre exquis, which means a strange dead body, <laughs> a strange cadaver. And the cadavre exquis was an assemblage of different things that were painted by different people. So you have a big sheet of paper. And you start, okay? So Ali Reza, you start. On the top left corner, draw something, and then hide it, cover it, but leave the extremes showing. The next artist has to come, looks at those little colors, and carries on using the same colors, carries on painting what he or she thought you painted. It's a continuation. Then we cover what was done. We cover the two images. The third artist comes and tries to guess, oh, what were they painting? Let me carry on and let's complete. And in the end, you end up with a painting that has got seven, eight, nine, ten different universes. And because they are all together on the same image, 
it's like a trip. It's like being on drugs. You know, you are traveling through different realities within the same painting. This idea of surrealism, of trying to unveil the unconscious, in psychoanalysis, what is paranoic knowledge? Because in common language, when we talk about paranoia, we mean the person is crazy. Yes. Let me refer you to a rich literature about the Ines and free of Ines. And you know Rumi's famous poet in Farsi yes. language, the rich poet about the way you can free of your Inesses. In every mysticism approach in every country, you can find a kind of freeness advices of your Ines. I think that it is so far from the psychoanalytic story, even Lacan. I think what you refer is a kind of uh, differentiation between the two self. Let me refer you to the Winnicott theory, one of the famous object relation uh, theorician, when he talks about the false self and true self. Hmm? False self is based on others' expectations, what lack on others' desires. When you lost yourself, when you lost your desire in others' desires, you will not exist. Because your existence is your desire. And the treatment in the Lacanian theory is growing your desire. The client must free his or her desire from the other, maybe the big other. Ah, so sometimes you must enter shock with your own culture, with your own family. Exactly, exactly. Winnicott says the same thing in other language. Winnicott tried to explain when you have a false self and you are not aware of your false self because your false self started from your childhood when the highly expected parent started to expect their own children, mostly maybe the obsessive compulsive parents, hmm? cause the children make a false self that always trying to have their parent confirmation, always try to alert about his or her parents' expectations. And he lost his true desire in their parents' desires. Hmm? And maybe your answer is that when you are talking about the lack of eyeness in Lacan theories, maybe you are referring lack of our desire. And Lacan believes and Winnicott believes that the symptoms come when you lost your own true self, Winnicott. And Lacan, the symptoms come from others' desires, not yours. And when you get back all of your desires, you have your own subjectivity. And this is treatment.